Okay, so what is protection dog training? Really and truly can be anything. I mean, we have under that title subcategories. We can have personal protection dog training, police dog training, military dog training, uh, guard dog training. I mean, it really depends on what we're, our end game is. Uh, with that said, if we're talking about personal protection dog training, we're talking about a dog that has been developed or created to protect one's home, their vehicle, even themselves, their family. So usually when we work with dogs in that realm of training, we're looking at, let's say hypothetically, 60-40. 60% we're going to be working the dog in defense, 40% in prey. And why we say that is because this dog will be trained to guard, to defend. So we need him to be able to work at a higher level in defense or it's in its defense drive. The prey drive is needed and an example of why we need the prey drive for the personal protection dog is let's say you come home with your dog from a walk you see the side door is ajar, somebody may be in the house. We want to be able to send the dog in the home and search for that person. And so that now falls under the realm of the prey drive. And when we talk about prey drive, it is the drive to chase, to grab, and to vanquish. So now, once that dog finds or indicates the person who could be hiding in the closet, now it should be able to and ready to engage with that individual and be able to deal with the stress that may come with that encounter and hence the reason for the defense drive. Now if we're talking about the police service, military dogs, now those percentages would be reverse. So let's say hypothetically 60% working in prey, 40% in defense because usually these dogs are hunting whether it's a police dog hunting for a bad guy in a back alley or a military dog searching for an insurgent hidden in a cave we need higher levels of prey drive and then eventually now god forbid things go south the dog has to be able to deal with stress that may come from the encounter so now all of a sudden the bad guy turns on the dog the dog has to be able to deal with that type of stress so in protection training, the way we do it, when working those two primary drives, the defense drive and the prey drive, what we do is we build the prey drive. So we really cultivate it. With the defense drive now, what we do is we teach the dog how to manage that drive. So when I say manage that drive, to be able to work with adversity and or stress and without compromising the quality of the work. So on the one hand, the prey drive, we're building it. On the other hand, with the defense drive, we're teaching the dog to manage. Ultimately, the combination of the two would eventually give us, in quotations, a fight drive, where we've developed a dog that loves the fight. And when we say fight, fight drive, we're saying that, and again, hypothetically, what we're saying is the willingness of the dog to initiate and engage in battle despite it knows harm may come to it. So let's use an example, hockey players. They love the sport and that sport contains violence. So when they drop the gloves, these guys are ready to go and they love it. It's all part of the sport. And that's what we want with our protection dog. We want to eventually develop a dog that doesn't mind stress and that actually looks forward to it and knows how to handle that type of stress. This is what we're trying to develop in our police service dog, our military dog, our personal protection dog. We want these dogs to go in there and do what it has to do without flinching, without going into avoidance behavior, going belly up. That's what we're developing in our protection dog. A common question I normally get asked um, from clients that come to us seeking for protection dog training with their pet dog is will the dog change? Will its attitude change towards the family unit? And the answer is no. That animal will still view your family as the pack. And so we wouldn't have to worry about the dog turning on the owners or the children because it's all part of the pack. It's, it's what it knows. However, now when we have people visiting the home, whether it be a friend, uh, 
an uncle that you haven't seen in a while or an aunt, a grandmother, people that don't really frequent the house, then we have to add caution. This is where the safety is important. Simply because now that dog has been trained to suspect any and everyone outside of the family unit. And you have to remember this, the true personal protection dog is there to influence people, not win friends. And that can be a hard concept for some people to, to uh, accept because what they would like is a dog that knows the good guys and the bad guys. And contrary to what you may see in the movies, and I know this because I used to do movie work, is the dog does not have that ability. A lot of what it knows comes through conditioning, training. So whether we teach the dog to react to a hand up with a stick or some type of violent encounter, it doesn't matter who it comes from, the dog will react accordingly. So management is a big part of owning a personal protection dog. Normally, and we suggest if you're going to have guests over, you're going to have a party, uh, the dog should be put away, whether it be in its crate or its kennel, uh, prior to the arrival of guests. So this way, everyone, everyone in the home is safe. Um, when we go out for walks with our personal protection dog, we have to be very diligent and we have to be environmentally aware. So when I say environmentally aware of other people, dogs in the area, um, simply because things can go wrong and it happens very quickly. We've seen that in the past. And our obedience on our personal protection dog has to be very strong. The obedience, you can equate that to, let's say, the safety clip on a gun. This is what keeps the dog controlled. Because you have to remember, when that dog goes out in public or when people come to the home, it will suspect because that's its job. It's no different than the president or prime minister. When they go out in public, they're usually surrounded by secret service or security. And they're not there socializing. They're there to do a job. And that is your personal protection dog. There you have it. So you got a chance to see some dogs in action doing protection work. Um, I hope the video was very informative. You might want to look forward to some of our future videos where we get into things under the realm of protection like drive channeling, drive thresholds, tolerance to stress. These are different areas or topics that we're going to cover in regards to the development of your protection dog. If you love the, if you love the video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and please hit that subscribe button on your screen. Until then, have a good one.